What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash petty revenge. This story's called, A kid told me I was too fat and too old to understand handball, so I stopped holding back. Last week, I, a 50-year-old female, was told by a 12-year-old boy I was too fat and too old to understand handball. I watched him play with the other kids for a bit and he was a complete arse about it. He deliberately taunt the younger kids, promised them he wouldn't get them out, then send devastatingly fast balls at their heads and point and laugh when they got out. He changed the rules so he never got out and he blatantly cheated. I inserted myself into the game. He was very condescending and promised to go easy on me. I smashed that ball all over the court. Low shots, high shots, balls with spin. He didn't stand a chance. The best bit was, after I got him out for the fourth time, the other kids cheered. I spent the rest of the afternoon teaching the kids how to play while he sulked in the corner. Petty as fridge and immature as hell, but super satisfying to see him get his comeuppance. Yes, I'm a terrible person, but he was much nicer to the other kids the next day. Edit, for those wondering why a 50-year-old is playing with kids, I'm currently working as an out-of-school hours care educator in Australia. I'm talking about handball as in the lunchtime game played by school kids, also known as Foursquare. In this particular version of the game, you each stand in a small square that is part of a larger square. You hit a tennis ball to each other with your hands. The squares are designated ace, king, queen, and dunce. If you're an ace and you get out, you go back to dunce. If you're in any of the other squares, you leave the field and someone else comes in. We don't play dodgeball, that's barbaric. I've never watched any of the shows that have been referenced, except in passing as I flick through the channels. I was annoyed by both his attitude to the younger kids when he won and by his assumptions about me based on my age, gender, and body shape. Hope that answers all the questions. Oh, I remember when I was in elementary school, uh, I used to play a game similar to that. Uh, we called it Foursquare, but it was a little bit different. I'm not exactly sure what the differences were, but I believe we just numbered the squares instead of... Uh, you get what I'm saying. But this story was cool. I love it when cocky bastards get schooled. Literally. This story's called, Lady Demands to Speak to an American. Never says what language she wants. Some background. I'm an American that was born and raised in the South. It's an obvious dialect. Also, English is a second language for most people here. Language barriers are not uncommon. All of this comes into the revenge. Years ago, I worked in a call center. It was a large company with English and Spanish departments. I worked in the English department but sat next to our Spanish department. I handled billing. No one calls billing in a good mood, but in general they're angry with the company, not the rep. You calm them down, fix the issue, and you're off to the next call. Few customers are memorable, but this one I will never forget, and I still laugh. This call happened on a busy day with long wait times. This just made the revenge sweeter. The call went like this. Thank you for calling blah blah blah. I want an American on the phone. What? I said I want an American on the phone. Ma'am, I'm an American. I want an American on the phone. At this point, I can only assume I'm not speaking the right language. Un momento, por favor. I put her on hold, transfer her over to the Spanish line, and just giggle to myself. But it didn't end there. The lines were starting to calm down and I was chatting with one of the Spanish reps when his deskmate pops up and says she's got a psycho on the phone. It was the woman I had transferred. She was going ballistic. 
The Spanish rep had her on mute while talking to us. I apologized and told her what happened. She started laughing, then looks right at me and says, I'm gonna put her back in the Spanish queue. The Spanish department had a blast laughing at this crazy bench as they kept putting her back in the queue. I don't know if she ever got her issue fixed. Then again, we never found out what the issue was either. She was too busy yelling at everyone. Moral of the story, be nice to phone reps. Yeah, people seem to forget that America doesn't necessarily have an official language. Well, obviously, as part of the naturalization requirements, you have to know English at least a little bit, like enough to get by, because as you know, uh, a lot of America does rely on the fact that most of its population does know English. But the point remains that there's technically no law out there that says English has to be what you speak. And frankly, to force an individual to speak any language in America is un-American. This story's called, I Fed the Female Dog Dog Treats. On mobile for give spelling, formatting, and all that. Buckle up, kiddos. This is a long and exciting ride. Unfortunate wording. The year is 2006. I was a young, dumb girl that had gone and gotten myself married to someone completely wrong for me. He refused to work and as a result of financial difficulties of us both being in school and only me working, we found us living with his mom. Let me tell you, that is every newlywed's dream. Over the course of us living with her, anytime I would buy myself a food treat, mother-in-law would eat it. Didn't matter what it was or where I hid it. She was a bloodhound for sniffing out things that I bought just for me. The final straw was one night we had gone out to dinner at the Cheesecake Factory. I had taken my slice to go and put it in the fridge. I was gonna have it after work the next day. Next day at work is absolute crap. And the only thing getting me through my shift is the slice of cheesecake I know is in my fridge. I go home and pop the lid off the container and it doesn't look right. There are mother-loving fork marks all around the outside perimeter of my cheesecake. Like she could just sneak some off all around and I wouldn't notice. I was pissed. I went and handed it to her and told her she may as well eat the rest of it. Fast forward a few days and I am at the pet store picking up some dog food. I'm standing in line waiting to check out and they have these little boxes of dog treats that look like the little red boxes of animal crackers you can buy for little kids. Now, it very clearly says on the front, circus animals for dogs. About this time, I've got the little devil sitting on my shoulder whispering in my ear, do it. And then the angel pops onto my other shoulder and screams, freaking do it. So they magically end up with the stuff I am buying. I drive home and leave everything in a bag all together on the kitchen counter. Several hours later, she comes into our room and says, I think there was something wrong with those animal crackers. They were the most awful ones I've ever eaten. I had to eat a whole thing of frosting with them just to finish them. All I said was, huh, and shrugged my shoulders. Okay, so my question is, once she realized initially that it was really bad, like she was eating a dog treat, all right? I don't know if any of y'all have eaten dog food before, but I have out of curiosity because sometimes it looks pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, they don't taste like human food. Every fiber of your being is telling you, this is not for your consumption. This is, this is food, but not for you. So for her to eat one, be absolutely repulsed, no doubt. And then for her to think, oh, it just needs frosting. So she gets frosting and eats. Why? What went through her brain? This story's called Steal My Friend's Orange, Enjoy a Night of Puking. My best friend forever and I were sitting in English literature. 
She had an orange on her desk. This boy took it and refused to give it back. He wasn't being a bully or anything, but kind of teasing. And then he ate it in front of us while he was laughing. So we told him he shouldn't have eaten it. Why not? Because it was in my locker for two weeks. I was going to throw it away after class. Yeah, plus she dropped it on the floor and we were kicking it around. And then I stabbed it with my pencil. I think part of the lead broke off in it. I hope you don't get lead poisoning. He accused us of lying and we just shrugged and ignored him for the rest of the class. The next day, he came to class. He didn't look too good. Said he was up that night puking. We told him we were just kidding. That none of what we said happened. Poor guy. Didn't know what to believe at that point. <laughs> Man, I wish they didn't tell us that. I'd prefer to keep it uh, ambiguous. Things can be more enjoyable when you're forced to fill in the blanks. Keeps you interested. This story's called, Is This Yours? So this is about my mom. Growing up, we had a large back garden that had a fence in the back with two neighbors behind it, a line of spruce trees on one side with one neighbor, and a garden running along the other side with a split rail fence and one neighbor. And when I say garden, I mean garden. This was about half an acre with a lower area and the deck and a barbecue pit, a hill with a rock garden, a veggie garden with raspberries along the back fence, and even a fire pit on the plateau of the hill. The other neighbors had similar sized yards. We had a large dog who would obviously go in the backyard, but he was trained to go in the far off area along the spruce edge because it was less developed than the rest of the property. Then the new neighbors moved in. They too had a dog. I think it may have been a Lassie-like creature. This was 20 years ago. So, dog poo starts showing up in odd places. At first, we thought it was our dog being bad and or lazy. But we watched him for a bit and he was still only going in his designated area. Then, we saw it. The Lassie creature was slipping through the split rail past the sumac in the mock orange and going in our yard, then slipping back. My mom peeked over to their yard and as far as she could notice, she didn't see any dog poo in their grass. She mentioned this to the new neighbor who said she'd handle it, but it didn't stop. So my mom began to make a pile of all the dog poo that was not ours for about a month. She then got a shovel, got all the poo on it, and then rang their doorbell. When the neighbor answered, my mom dropped the poo in front of her and said, I believe this is yours. After that, they actually became good friends. <laughs> well, your neighbors are a good sport then, because that's freaking hilarious. <laughs> you do not want to owe that woman any money. So this story's called... Entitled Karen couldn't wait in line for two minutes, so I wasted her next 15. The title of this post pretty much covers the whole story, but anyway, I'll explain the whole situation. The cast. There's Mr. Britton, who is me, Mr. Britton Sr., my dad and co-worker, Karen, the entitled bimbo who has patience as long as a fish's memory, about 10 seconds. So for a bit of context. I work in a small shop in retail. Because of this, all staff work in the shop floor and till area. I was putting out stock as I had been asked to by my manager and my dad was working the till. He's XRAF and just works a few hours a week to keep himself busy. He's also the reason I managed to get the job in the first place. That's when I hear the dreaded noise. Ahem! I continue doing what I'm doing as I can't leave stock lying in the middle of the floor. Hey, you boy! Get another till open now! Okay, I'll be down when I finish this. Can't leave the stock in the middle of the floor. Someone might trip. I don't give a crap! Open the till now! I finish what I'm doing and walk down to the till area and would you believe it, the bimbo is second in line. Mr. Britton Sr., uh, do I need to open another till? Customers are getting impatient. Just open a freaking till! Mr. Britton Sr. just shrugs. So I did as she asked, but I made sure to take as long as possible. 
I scanned things wrong, I asked all the questions, and I scanned really, really slowly. In the end, the two minute wait she would have had if she just stood quietly and waited ended up being 15 minutes. It wasn't much, but I just wanted to be awkward. Sorry about formatting, I'm on mobile. Ah, the power that is given to retail employees in key moments like these is what makes it worth it, I'm assuming. That and also the crappy pay. This story's called Kid on the School Bus Gets More Than He Bargained For When He Steals My Brother's Snacks. I originally posted this in a comment thread, but I was told I should post this here. There was a kid on the bus in middle school that would not stop stealing my brother's snacks, so we decided to teach him a lesson. Story's a little long, but worth the read. This preteen imbecile, without asking, would snatch my brother's backpack from the seat behind us and root through it for food. He would then proceed to loudly complain to anyone listening if there was nothing edible or if he didn't like what he had stolen. We repeatedly told him to stop, but this continued to occur over a span of several months. So as anyone would do in this situation, we decided to fill a bag of very enticing looking corn nuts with dog kibble and wasabi balls. For those of you who don't know, wasabi balls are the same size and weight of corn nuts, and you can't taste the spice until they've been in your mouth for about 3 seconds. The kibble was also the same size and weight as the corn nuts. As per our previous observations, we learned that the kid would tear these bags open and pour about a quarter of the bag's contents into his mouth at once, so we planned accordingly. We made a small incision at the very bottom of the bag and took out about half of the corn nuts and replaced them with the wasabi balls and kibble. We then used invisible tape over the incision to make sure the thief wouldn't suspect anything and shook the bag to mix the contents. In my opinion, it was great handiwork for two 12 year olds barely passing math. The next morning, we were more than ready to enact revenge. Our plan worked seamlessly. When the kid took the backpack and stole the bag of corn nuts, we discreetly watched from the other side of the seat. He didn't think to look around while tearing open his prize. As hypothesized, he poured about a quarter of the corn nuts into his mouth. He chewed for about five seconds before he spewed the kibble, wasabi ball, and corn nut mixture all over the floor of the bus. He didn't even look at us, which was probably a good thing, seeing as we were trying our hardest not to burst out laughing. Needless to say, he did not steal my brother's snacks after that incident. And he got in trouble for making a mess of the bus. I have many, many more stories about this dude throughout the rest of middle school and into high school, but this is by far my favorite. I love stories about food thieves getting <laughs> sabotaged food. And also, tampered food is like one of my favorite ways to kill a target in Hitman games. Yeah, I'm so excited for Hitman 3. <laughs> this story's called Sister Tried to Kick Me But Fell on Her Butt Instead. This happened when I was about 14 or so in the early 2000s. I was looking at my parents' movie shelf of VHS to try and find a good movie to watch. I think I grabbed Beetlejuice. I was down on my hands and knees looking at the bottom of the shelf. For whatever reason, my sister came walking by while wrapped in a blanket. She stopped to look at me. I guess you could say she was never one to miss a chance to laugh at someone else's expense. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw her leg raised to kick my bum. If she had, it'd have sent my face right into the shelf, but I guess my reflexes were too quick, because I spun around and grabbed her foot as soon as her leg swung at me. This made her lose balance and fall down onto the floor. She got up and our parents started laughing at her. They'd seen the whole thing. My sister looked completely humiliated and ran to her room like a brat and didn't come out for hours, but I was laughing about what happened for days. You don't know how many times uh, parents 
try and slap my butt and I just block it. And they'd be like, ah, you jerk. It's all in good fun though. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.